Hey everybody, welcome to the video. We are out west this weekend in Fontana, California for the Wise Power 400 at Auto Club Speed for the first time since 2020. Hopefully you all enjoyed the race last weekend. I thought it was pretty good all around. Hopefully it was good from a DFS perspective for you guys, but it's going to be a completely different approach and strategy when building lineups this weekend. So make sure you listen to how we're going to approach this slate. And if you're brand new, my name is Chris Pinnell. I break down the race each and every single weekend on this channel. I also do a live stream on Sundays in a part of the Osmo YouTube channel and do content over there as well. And if you do end up enjoying the free content that I put out over on YouTube, all I ask is if you can just leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new content, and leave a comment agreeing, disagreeing with any of the takes I have, or if you just wanna say hi, Every little bit helps and I do appreciate it. And if we can get around 300 likes for this video, that would be absolutely awesome. I asked for 400 last weekend. We got nearly 500, so you guys absolutely killed it. So let's see if we can do it again this week. And if you do wanna take this one step further and join the number one NASCAR DFS community out there, which I think we can boast officially now because last weekend we had the millionaire maker from our own Discord. My guy, Sean Trailer over in Discord, he's been a long time member, grinding NASCAR tickets and NBA contests all season long. Took down the million, not only just the million, he had three lineups in the top 10, all unique, using the optimizer projections. So I just wanna give a big shout out to him because he totally deserves it. Life-changing money was super awesome to see. So if you like the free content over here, I think you'll really enjoy the paid content over on the Patreon. Projections for DraftKings, FanDuel, and Prize Picks. My entire NASCAR model, the optimizer, ownership projections, which I believe are the most accurate in the industry. Only a 3% margin of error last weekend for the Daytona 500, which I think it's pretty good, but I think we can get better on that. And it's got pretty much everything you need in a Discord that is literally hopping 24 seven. I am not exaggerating about that. So if you wanna join, link can be found down below, orange bubble in the description, just hit that link. And since we're close to the end of the month, if you sign up on the 26th or 27th, I don't want you to get double charged. So if you do sign up and you stay signed up the following month on March 1st, I will refund one of those charges. So it's like you're getting this race for free. So if you wanna take advantage of that, Make sure you sign up. You can send me a message to make sure you remind me, but I should be able to remember, but I will refund one of the charges as my treat to you all for just being awesome with the likes, watching the live stream, and just all the comments you guys leave me. I really do appreciate it, so I wanna do something nice. And lastly, I can't forget about the sponsor of the show, Prize Picks, is Daily Fantasy Sports Simplified. I absolutely love playing over there, and I love what they're doing this season, as they have now changed to DraftKings scoring. They offer laps led, fast laps, and place differential props, which, it was kind of tough to do for Daytona last weekend, but I think it's going to be much easier to project this weekend. I have an entire spreadsheet of all the props based and uh, the leverage scores I have on them and projections. So I put them in my article, so I do cover price picks and I do play over there every single week. So if you want to check it out, make sure you use code CPEN if you're a new signer over there because you can get an instant deposit match bonus up to $100. There is no catch. If you deposit anywhere up to hundred bucks, you will get the exact amount that you deposited for free as a match in your account. So it's free money. Make sure you take advantage of it. But I think that'll be pretty much it for the plugs for the most part. So without further ado, let's dive into this week's preview. And as always, I have to mention a few things before we get started. So first off, the live stream this weekend on this channel, the one that you are watching right now, I would plan on 11 a.m. Might be a little bit later than that, but I'm going to plan on 11 a.m. So make sure you come in and uh, ask all the questions you want. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And it's always a fun place to hang out before the race. That'll be on the awesome mode live before lock starting at 2.30 with me and Jason. We'll answer all your questions and break down the slate. And then as far as the DraftKings contest goes this weekend, same rules apply. First come, first serve. I'm going to put it to 100 people. We had 200 people last week. It filled three hours before lock, but that is a ton of 500. So I'm thinking I'm going to put it back at 100. If it fills early, I can make it 150 the next week. So we're going to play around with it a little bit, but I'd rather it fill than not fill. So first come, first serve. You can leave your DK username down below in the comments. I'll be more than happy to invite you. Although it's kind of easier for everybody if I just put a link in the comment section, I'll pin it. And it's gonna take you to my Twitter post that has the link to it. And you can join the contest that way without making me invite you. But whatever you prefer, I'll be more than happy to accommodate whatever need that you have. But anyway, this is the Wise Power 400 at Auto Club Speedway. There's your outline of the track. It's a very large D-shaped oval. It's a high tire wear track which I always like the high tire wear tracks as it does add a bit of a twist. If you're looking for comparable intermediate high tire wear tracks, Darlington, which is a little bit on the smaller side, but it's still high tire wear and it is a bit of an intermediate, not quite 1.5 miles, but it's close enough. You also have Atlanta. No, not anymore, but old Atlanta. That was definitely very high tire wear and it played out similar to this track. And you could also look at Homestead Miami Speedway 
as well. And you could also throw in Michigan, which is another two mile track, just doesn't have that high tire where the Auto Club has. And then all the other 1.5s as well as two miles in length, like I just mentioned. We have 200 laps similar to last week, which means we have once again, 140 dominator points available to us. And unlike last week, where I didn't care one bit about dominator points, dominator points are going to be pretty important this week as you are not going to win a DraftKings tournament without at least one dominator in your lineup. Someone's gonna pick up a good chunk of fast laps, Someone's going to lead a large chunk of this race, and you're definitely going to want like one to two in all of your lineups this week. And you can stretch it to three, kind of like a guy that maybe just picks up fast laps and finishes top five. But for the most part, we are looking at one to two dominators in all of our lineups this weekend. But I will say, after watching practice and qualifying, that was an absolute mess. We had so many, not even just bad drivers spinning out. We had some really, really solid and some of the best drivers in the field spinning out in qualifying and practice just to name a few off the top of my head we had joey logano in qualifying brett keselowski chase elliott william byron eric amarola and then we believe in practice we had chris busher christopher bell kevin harvick ross chastain justin haley didn't even make a lap so yeah it was an absolute mess these guys are having a very tough time driving in the next gen car we need more practice time I'm hoping maybe nascar sees this and makes a you know, it gives us our normal practice where we'd have like a practice on Friday, a practice on Saturday, like we did with Daytona. But yeah, that was an absolute mess. It does make place differential look a lot better considering we have like 20 good place differential plays now. Bubba Wallace just came ahead where he's going to be starting in the back as well. So, so it's definitely looking a little bit more chaotic than I anticipated. So we'll have to plan accordingly. But I think that'll be pretty much it for the preview for the most part. So we'll dive right into the driver by driver breakdown. And as always, if you're wondering my overall thoughts on the pricing, well, since DraftKings did not know the starting positions when they dropped pricing, and I guess the same could be set for Fandle, which I did out on the sheet now, we definitely have some pretty good value plays with guys starting in the very back, if not very close to it, because of how qualifying shaked out, where a lot of good drivers were not able to make times, or they spun out, or something along those lines. So it's kind of open, and I will say I just put these qualifying spots in. So we're kind of going through this together, if you want more up-to-date thoughts, we'll be talking about that in the live stream. I'll obviously have everything broken down in Patreon, but these are like my first gut live reactions on these pricing. So we'll just dive through it together and I guess we'll see what happens. But we'll start up top with the most expensive guy, deservedly so, Kyle Larson, $11,600. Last year's Cup Series champion absolutely killed these track types. No one was even close in terms of lap sled or fast laps or basically everything. He absolutely crushed every single category. Was first in green flag speed at the high tire wear venues, which is what Auto Club is. He was first in green flag speed at the large intermediates, first in every single statistical category, basically for the most part, tied with first for a couple of guys for some minor statistics. But he was obviously by far the best driver. Like, I don't think anybody can debate that. Kyle Larson was the man, he's the favorite in Vegas for this race. And starting in 13th, we normally think, heck yeah, Kyle Larson in 13th, that's an amazing PD Dom play. But again, keep in mind, so many other good place differential plays with the way how qualifying shaked out. We do have some practice numbers to look at, but I'm not going to put too much into it just because we don't have much data. Like most of these guys ran like 15 to 20 laps and we had one driver, Joe Logano, run a 15 lap run and because we had to keep starting and stopping because everyone spun out. So we couldn't really get too much uh, consecutive laps down and we only had 15 guys run 10 lap runs. So really not too much data to work with and I'm gonna really get caught up in the noise or anything. Cause I don't think Kyle Larson is gonna be like a 15th place driver in this race, 15th in the five lap. So I'm not gonna put too much stock into it. It's on the page if you want it. And some guys that were fast, yeah, it was nice to see them fast, but I don't think it's gonna be like the end all be all this week. But yeah, Larson, I like him starting 13th. You can play him in cash or tournaments. Don't mind that. Uh, Chase Elliott, $11,100. He's starting in eighth. He was one of the guys that did spin out in qualifying. And I do not have the information yet, which guys are going to be going to a backup car officially or not. So we'll kind of discuss that on the live stream because I'm not kidding. I As soon as qualifying ended, I got the numbers up and I hopped on here to record this video. So we'll have more information for that on the live stream tomorrow. But assuming Chase is going to go starting an eighth, I think he's a decent pivot off of Kyle Larson shot because Larson is certainly going to be the highest one driver in this range. I mean, he offers you the most PD upside. He's not overly expensive for what Kyle Larson is at 11600 bucks. He's a former winner at Auto Club. I mean, it's hard not to like Kyle Larson, but Chase Elliott's also pretty solid at Auto Club. Good at the two mile tracks, good at large intermediates, and he's in a Hendrick car and starting in eighth. Assuming he's good to go, even if he goes, goes, does go to the rear, I still think he can play Chase. He was first in the 10 lap runs, but again, small sample size, not gonna put too much into it, but he was fast. And I thought he was gonna get the pole before he spun out, just because pushed it a little bit too hard, but I think Elliott 
is a fine tournament play if you're just trying to get off the chalk there. Uh, Denny Hamlin, 10700 bucks. He's starting in fourth. He was basically second to Kyle Larson in most statistics last season when it came to these track types. He was second in green flag speed at the large intermediates, second in green flag speed at the high tower venues, and pretty much second in dominator points. And Denny Hamlin had a great season last year in $10,700. I think Kyle Busch will be higher owned than Denny Hamlin. I think a popular... Well, before all the plays differential, I thought a popular combo was going to be Kyle Larson, Kyle Busch heading into the weekend, and that still could be popular. You're still going to want dominators. And with Austin Sendrick and Eric Jones in the front row, there's a decent chance that Denny Hamlin or Kyle Busch could get the lead early on and lead the first stage. So I think Hamlin and Busch are excellent tournament plays. I mean, you could get away with it in cash, but it's probably not the way I would go just because I want to lock in some of these place differential guys. But Denny Hamlin is certainly a good tournament play to get off of a, I guess, a chalky pivot from Kyle Busch. And speaking of Kyle Busch, $10,400. I think a lot of people were saying this year with the return of practice that we're going to be on Kyle Busch because he's a guy that really needs practice, which, yes, but again, we had like 15 minutes of practice and we just really couldn't get that many consecutive runs. But he was fast, second on the five lap, second on the 10 lap. Did almost lose it a couple of times. But again, if we're betting on talent, Kyle Busch is one of the most talented drivers in the field. He was great at the large ovals last year. A fantastic driver out of club. I show you guys the stats, but I don't want to sound boring just reading all the numbers to you. But Kyle Busch does have a winning auto club, the most laps left per race, the most fast laps in the past few seasons. Haven't been here since 2020, but Kyle Busch good at auto club and with the return of practice did have some track time. Not gonna change too much because it's only 15 minutes, but I think Kyle Busch starting third. Decent chance he could be the early dom in this race if Austin Cindric isn't able to hold on. And Ryan Blaney, $10,000. I think there's a decent chance that Ryan Blaney could be the lowest owned guy in this range. It's just that I would much rather play everybody else. Maybe not Chase if he happened to go to the rear, but Blaney's a guy that typically does have speed at large ovals, and it's just I'm not really feeling too much Ryan Blaney. It hurts me to say that. You guys know I love Blaney. I liked him last week. Did sneak into the off lineup starting seventh at Daytona, but $10,000 starting in six is a bit steep for me because I can get Harvick $800 cheaper starting nearly 30 spots further back. So I'm probably not going to have too much Blaney, but if I'm building 20 to 150 lineups, I think I'll get a little bit of Blaney in, but he's not a single entry guy or a three max guy for me this weekend. And dropping into the 9K range, we have Martin Truex Jr., 9,800 bucks, starting in 12th place, kind of in a dead spot where do I really want to play Truex or do I just want to dip my toes down to Kevin Harvick? So I think a lot of people will have that same mindset. So I don't think Truex, I don't think anybody is going to have high ownership in this 9K range besides Harvick. Like who wants to play Bowman? Who wants to play Logano? After seeing him spin, I mean, I don't mind some Logano, but William Byron, Truex, like, just give me Harvick starting all the way in the very back. But Truex is a guy that's also very good at Auto Club, so I think he's a decent tournament play. I like him more than Blaney because of the extra PD. It was not that great at the large ovals last year. He was definitely a guy who only played at short tracks, but again, new car, so things can certainly change there. Wasn't overly impressive in practice, but not going to put too much into it. I think Truex is just a fine tournament play. Uh, William Byron, $9,600. Like, all these guys are basically the same play. Like You can't really say too much about them because we have the new car, so there's not too many data points I can really point to besides what they did last year, what I saw in practice and qualifying. But then we didn't really have much to look at in practice and qualifying besides guys spinning out or just kept getting red flags in practice so we couldn't get too many runs going. But Byron, starting in 10th, did get stuck on the grass. Didn't really take a ton of damage there. I mean... He's pretty much the same play as a lot of these guys. I hate to keep saying the same thing, but I had issues in qualifying, but I still think they're going to have a fast car. I'm still a believer in Hendrick Motorsports. If I like Chase, if I like Larson, I'm not really sure how I feel about Bowman, but starting 14, that's somewhat interesting. But Byron's a guy that you can definitely target. I mean, he was great at similar tracks last year. He won Homestead, which is a track that you can you know, compare to Auto Club with the high tire wear and it's still a large intermediate. So I think Byron's a interesting turn play that I don't think a lot of people will click on. Joe Ligano, $9,400, did get a little bit of damage, did scuff up the, I believe it was the right rear, if I remember correctly. Starting in seventh, he was fast in practice, and he definitely had a good car, and he is good at Auto Club, only $9,400, pulling up some of his numbers. Uh, Auto Club, a 5.8 average finish, a 6.8 running position, dry rating over 100, four top fives, five top tens, and some overall pretty strong numbers. I'm typically a one to play Joey more so at the short flat tracks, but I think he would be somewhat interesting Assuming everything's all good with this car, but they'll figure it out. I'm not sure if I'll have to drop to the rear or not. I guess that would be some pretty important news to know for tomorrow. But as of right now, kind of in the dark on that. But if you start at 7, 9400 bucks, I think Joey is someone that you could definitely take some flyers on for sure. 
Uh, getting into a chalky guy here, Kevin Harvick, 9,200 bucks. You are probably playing him in cash games. Again, I'm not ran my projections yet. I've not done my ownership projections. Just talking off the top of my head as I see the slate because I'm going through it the first time with you guys. So we're in this together. But starting 32nd, he's definitely cash game viable. I know we're not big Kevin Harvick guys anymore. I wasn't really playing him too much last season, but it's hard not to like him starting all the way back in 32nd. Can easily be a top 15, top 12 guy at the end of the day. And starting 32nd, it's definitely quite appealing. Alex Bowman, $9,000 starting in 14th. Kind of an ugly play just because he's sandwiched right in between Kurt Busch starting 36th and Kevin Harvick 32nd. So I don't think anyone's really going to play Bowman. He's actually the most recent winner here at Auto Club, though. Was fantastic in that race. He was fastest in practice, and it definitely translated to the race, starting in 14th. Interesting turn and play just to get off like the chalky Harvick and Kurt Busch. Dropping down to the 8K range here, we have Kurt Busch, 800 bucks, starting in 36. Now, he's not a complete free square because he will have to do a pass-through penalty to start this race. All these other guys are fine. They're just starting in the rear. But he's going to start with a pass-through penalty, so... There's a decent chance he could fall that behind, although from what I've seen him practice and qualifying, I think he's going to get that caution and put him right back in the lead lap. I did rewatch the 2020 Atlanta race where he had to do a pass-through penalty, so same exact scenario, although it's a 1.5-mile track compared to a 2-mile track, so it's a little bit more leeway for Kurt. And Atlanta did have a competition caution, so that definitely helped him out a lot. But when Kurt came out of the pits, I believe he fell into like P7, P8, worked his way back up to P2, and now with a two-mile track, I mean, there's a decent chance he might have been able to stay on the lead lap. But from what I saw in practice and qualifying, I think oh, the I think there's going to be some cautions here. It's typically not a caution kind of track, but guys were not able to keep this under control. I think you could easily see a spin out or maybe a loose wheel or something that will get Kurt Busch on the lead lap early on. And if that's the case, starting in 36, he cannot hurt you. He is dead last. So I definitely like Kurt a lot, even though he is kind of priced up at 80, 100 bucks, I still think he'll be fine because if he finishes like 15 to 20, that's a very good day on DraftKings starting last. Brett Keselowski, 8,600 bucks. He's starting in ninth. He had a, he had some issues in qualifying, as did several other guys. Had to see some more information on who's going all going to the rear or not. But again, we'll talk about that on the live stream. I'll break it down in Patreon. But Cass has been awesome here at Auto Club. Like he's got some really, really good numbers. I know he's in a different car now, which is definitely probably going to be a bit of a downgrade in the six car compared to a Penske equipment. But he has an average finish of fourth. He has a win. Five top fives and six top tens the past six races here. Keselowski has been absolutely awesome. Was pretty good at large intermediates last season, but again, did downgrade equipment, at least theoretically, which it should be. But again, the new car should even out that a little bit, starting in ninth. Not sure if he's going to the back or not. I think he got flat tired and had to get, so I would assume, I guess that's probably going to be the case, but we'll have to wait and see. But Keselowski, I'm probably not going to be huge on, but might be a halfway decent turn and play at lower ownership because he's kind of sandwiched in between these place differential guys with Ross Chastain and Kurt Busch. So tournament only for me on Keselowski. Tyler Reddick might be one of the best turn up plays on the slate. 8400 bucks, starting 11th, was decently fast in practice. And like I said earlier, I'm going to try to bet on guys with talent. And Tyler Reddick is just one of my favorite drivers in the field. With you know, He's got plenty of talent. If he was in a top, top tier ride, I mean, Reddick could be competing for wins each and every single week, in my opinion. But starting at 11th, he's sandwiched in between place differential guys. And the people are rostering a Kyle Larson up top or a Kyle Busch, and they want to get in all these place differential guys, you're probably not getting to Tyler Reddick because you already have a couple guys starting close to the front. So you want to even out with all these place differential guys. But Tyler Reddick, I think he's a fantastic tournament play. He's always a top 10, top 15 threat at these track types last year. Always has top five potential. Similar tracks with high tire wear like Darlington, Homestead. I mean, he can definitely be a factor here. So I do like Tyler Reddick quite a bit at 8400 bucks. Hopefully his ownership is not too high. I'll be excited to see what kind of ownership he's looking at after I run some numbers on him. But if he's going to be low owned, I want to be overweight on that. A rush testing, 8200 bucks. Not really much to talk about here. Got destroyed in practice starting in 33rd. He's an excellent PD play, playing the cash games. Christopher Bell, $8,000 starting in 19th. Had an issue at the very, very end of practice. I believe he... I believe he got a flat tire. I forget exactly what happened, but I know he spun out. Sorry, 19th, though. The price is nice. I'd rather play Chastain, but if you're looking for the pivot, I mean, guys like Christopher Bell, Austin Dell, and Chris Buescher are definitely decent ways to go. And then you have Austin Cindric here at 7600 bucks during the pole, which will definitely get ownership just because he won the race last week. And now they string in the pole at $7,600. People are going to gravitate towards that, certainly so. So that Bell, Dylan, and Buescher range could definitely go a bit overlooked, especially with all the other place differential guys right in this similar price range. So 
I would not expect them to have much ownership, but Bell is a guy that obviously is a talented driver. In a Joe Gibbs car, the price is a little bit low. I think he's fine in tournaments. The same can be said for Austin Dillon. I talked about him in the Osmo video where he is a top 15, top 20 machine every single time at a large oval when he's actually got a pretty good track record at Auto Club. And he would have been 100% on getting top 20s last season at large ovals if he didn't wreck out of Michigan. And even then, he was running very well in Michigan. So, I mean, we can basically call it 100% success rate, finishing inside the top 20. He's starting 16th, always had top. I mean, he was like 9 for 11 or 9 for 10 and finishing removing Michigan for finishing inside the top 15 of these track types last year. So I think Dylan can certainly be a guy that you can look at in tournaments. And the same exact thing can be said for Chris Buescher. I mean, if you're looking at his large oval numbers last season, very, very strong for a guy that's not like priced super expensive. Now, it's a little bit pricey for Chris Buescher, but he had an average finish of 13.6, which is not too far from Boston Dylan. Both had five top 10s, eight top 15s, and 10 top 20s. So really kind of a similar play to Austin Dillon. Now, the big question mark is, what do we want to do with Austin Cindric? Because he's only $7,600. He won the race last week, starting on the pole. Do we think he's going to be able to hold off? I think he can obviously hold off Eric Jones. I mean, he's in a Penske car. and We've seen that the two car can perform very well here at Auto Club in the past with what Brett Keselowski has done. But is he going to be able to hold off the Joe Gibbs guys and Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch? Because they're going to be right behind him. And it's not it's no easy task as a rookie. I mean, keeping uh, Kyle Busch away from me, especially a guy that's very good at Auto Club. And a guy like Denny Hamlin, I think he's probably going to be 20-something percent owned. That's my guess right now. I'm get, I've not ran my numbers. That's just what my assumption would be. I think that would make sense. But if he can hold the lead for majority of stage one and he just finishes like top eight, that's not a bad day from Austin Cindric. So I'm certainly interested. I don't think I'm going to go there in cash games just because there's so many other place differential guys. Like if it came down to Almirola or Cindric from cash, I'll play on Marola, and I just hope like Kyle Busch gets the lead early on. I think that's probably the best way to go. But in tournaments, I'll play some Austin Cindric. This is a very talented driver. I know he's a rookie, but this is a you know, this is a top shelf rookie and very good car. Great equipment on Team Penske. So I think Cindric is definitely playable. I don't think I'm going to go there in cash games. I could change my mind by the time the live stream rolls around. But as of right now, I'm thinking I'm only going to go with him in tournaments. The thing is, I just like Kyle Busch a lot starting in third. I think he could easily get the lead after like a couple of laps or he could take it three wide at the very beginning. Uh, Eric Amarola starting in 31st and another guy that you could just chalk up as a good play to put play. Like he was terrible in this. I don't, I almost said this package. It's not the same package at these track types last season, but I mean, starting 31st, it's a new car, new season. I mean, he should be definitely be a top 20 contender and he has pretty little downside starting in 31st. Now you can't play all these plays to a guys in the same lineup. So we're going to have to, We'll have some rankings on who we like more and who's going to get the cut, but I think Amarillo is a fine play. Briscoe at 7200 bucks, starting in 24th. Like Bubba's right there, starting in 34th. You have Amarillo in 31st. I don't really see myself getting into Briscoe too much, but he's kind of like that pivot off the chalk. And Briscoe is certainly a guy that does have some upside. As he had an average finish around 17th place last season at these track types. Also had five top 15s and nine top 20s. So if you're just looking for a pivot off of a chalk, you're Bubba Wallace, which Bubba Wallace chalk sounds terrible. I don't think that's a bad way to go in tournaments. And speaking of Bubba, 7000 bucks starting in 34th. It's not pretty. I'd almost rather play Briscoe, to be honest. I mean, he's going to be a lower own, but Bubba's had his fair share of decent finishes last year at the large intermediates. I mean, 14th, 16th, 21st, 19th, but then 14th, 14th. So he's fine. I mean, starting in 34th, unless he wrecks early on, it'll be, it'll be hard to, for him to hurt you. He's just a little bit pricey, but again, he's... in the 2311 car, which obviously isn't going to be bad. It's in the same equipment Kurt Busch is in, which if I like Kurt Busch... I just think he's a way better driver than Bubba Wallace and DraftKings would agree, considering he's nearly $2,000 more expensive. But Bubba's a fine play. It just doesn't feel great. Harrison Burton, $6,900. He is an MDB's car from last season, starting in 22nd. I am really not a huge fan of Harrison Burton here. Don't have any cup numbers to look at. He just doesn't offer you the kind of place differential that Bubba or Justin Haley does, but he's priced right in between. So he'll be very low owned, but I think it's deservedly so. I think it's a pretty slim chance he makes it optimal. Justin Haley, 6700 bucks, starting in 31st. Starting in 35th will be a hard guy to get away from. He is the cheapest of the Mega PD guys. He is starting one spot above Kurt Busch, so he can only lose you one spot. And I think Justin Haley is a guy that definitely has top 20 potential here. So I will be all about Justin Haley. I will probably have a pretty decent chunk of him in 150 max builds this weekend. So yeah, you can sign me up for Haley. Price below 7K looks good. He's a better play than Bubba Wallace, in my opinion.
And he's basically like the same play as Bubba Wallace, just a little bit cheaper. Daniel Hemrick starting fifth is nearly unplayable, only just a dart throw if you're betting 150 laps. I just can't see him holding his position or getting a front leading laps at any point. Eric Jones is a complete fade for me. I can't play him starting in second. Now, the interesting situation here is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. or Daniel Suarez, because you're going to have to play some of these cheap guys. And I just think they're both underpriced. Uh, Stenhouse 17th, he was pretty fast in practice. Not going to put too much into it, but was third in the five lap, fourth in the 10 lap. And both these guys always have top 20 potential and a little bit of top 15 potential mixed in there. Last season at the large intermediates, I had Ricky Stenhouse, eight top 20s, five top 15s. Daniel Suarez, seven top 15s, eight top 20s. Basically the same play here. If I had to pick between the two, I'm probably going to lean towards Daniel Suarez, but it is very close. I, th- I think Stenhouse will probably be a little bit higher round starting at 17 because you get the added couple extra PD spots. But I'm personally going to have a Suarez, although it's kind of a kind of a toss-up. But Ricky Stenhouse numbers in practice were impressive enough to make me potentially lean his way. And then dropping into the 5K range, I think Cole Custer is underpriced. I mean, I know he kind of sucks, and I don't really ever like playing Cole Custer. But at $5,900 starting in 21st, if we're going to get like all these good plays and we're going to have to find some value somewhere. And Custer is certainly a guy that I think we can find a little bit of value just because he's got somewhat of an upside here. I mean, it's not pretty. He's in a Stuart Haas car, but five top 20s last season, one top 15. I mean, McDowell actually had more top 20s than Custer, but I don't hate him at $5,900. feel like he's just a little bit too cheap there. Michael McDowell, 5,700 bucks. Was pretty solid in this package last season. Had an average finish around 20th place. If he can just hold his position at 23rd or maybe finish a couple spots better than that. That'd be five fifty seven hundred bucks. Just kind of have to hope he doesn't die, which and that's something you really can't project anyway. Uh, Ty Dillon, 5,500 bucks, starting a little bit far up for my liking. I was really liking Ty Dillon heading into the weekend, but now that he's qualified 18th, does keep me off him a little bit. I just really can't see him improving upon that. I think there's a very strong chance he loses spots. Todd Gillen, 5,300 bucks, straight from the truck series, starting in 26th. I think he's a fine pump play. I mean, he's definitely better than Corey Ware, Josh Balicki, Gary Smith, BJ McLeod. He's in the same equipment that Michael McDowell's in. He's really cheap, starting in 26th. I could see him maybe getting a spot or two, and it's just fine at that price point. But even then, if he just holds his spot and doesn't wreck, I think Gillen's fine if you want to just fit in studs. Corey LaJoy, 5,100 bucks, starting in 25th. Obviously, not the greatest equipment over Inspire practice, 13th in the 10 lap, but again, keep in mind. Only 15 guys running 10 laps, 19th in the five lap, which is a little bit more of a data sample size because we have way more drivers that are in five laps, but some not enough, uh, not enough to get me to really get in on core of the joy. Here's just one of those guys you kind of mix in and just hope he doesn't wreck out at 5,100 bucks. And then after that, you are getting into the absolute scrubs, and what makes them viable is that they typically start in the very, very back. But with all the issues we had in qualifying, in practice, these guys are starting 30 and up, which does not make them appealing whatsoever. So I'd have a hard time getting any of these scrubs and I don't see a really reason to have to do that because you have LaJoy 5,100 bucks. It's not like we're really scrapping for value too much here. So I'm probably just gonna be staying away from the absolute scrubs this weekend. But with that being said, I think that'll be pretty much it for the video. So if you found it helpful, entertaining, useful, or whatever in any way possible, I kindly ask you to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. I'll be here all season long talking NASCAR DFS every single weekend. You can also find me over on the Osmo YouTube channel. Live stream will be tomorrow, probably around 11 a.m. And I'll be live before lock on Osmo with my host, Jason, if you want to check it out. Also, if you want to check out the Patreon, get all the extra content over there, and you can get this week for free as long as you signed up on March 1st. I'll be more than happy to refund that for you. Uh, link down below by the Orange Bubble. All the content will be up tonight, projections, ownership, and literally every single thing on the data sheet you will find. I will have that updated. I'll also get the articles out in a timely fashion and you can follow me over on twitter at chris 16 cpen 16 over on ig if you enjoy the DraftKings contest that i host every single week it'll be in the comments down below or you can leave your dq's name down in the comments i'll be more than happy to invite you and one more thing before we get out of here make sure you check out price picks if you haven't already and use code cpen again instant pause imagine bonus up to 100 dollars. absolutely love price picks I do talk about it in my article and I do have projections for it. So yeah, I think that'll be pretty much it. I'll get out of here and I will see you all on Sunday.